and I'm going to be demonstrating our procedure for you. Um, we measured out around 10 or 10.5 grams of ferrous ammonium sulfate, and we recorded that on our data table. And then we got about 30 milliliters of deionized water and put it in a clean 50 milliliter graduated cylinder. Then we transferred that to a 150 milliliter beaker. After that, we added the 10 grams of ferrous ammonium, ferrous ammonium sulfate and started to dissolve it. Then we added six drops or one milliliter of two molar sulfuric acid to the solution. And then we got about 50 milliliters of oxalic acid, 10% oxalic acid, and added it to our solution. This formed a yellow precipitate, and we heated that up and continuously start, continuously start it to prevent bumping and overflowing. And we turned the hot plate off and um, removed it to a ceramic fiber square to cool, continuously stirring to prevent bumping still. Then we got a 400 milliliter beaker and decanted the supernatant liquid in, uh, from the 150 milliliter beaker into a 400 milliliter beaker. And we used approximately 100 milliliters of deionized water to clean the to rinse out the precipitate and make sure that we got all of the supernatant liquid. That was the end of part one. Then we got about um, 18 milliliters of potassium oxalate and we added that to the container with the precipitate in it, the yellow precipitate. Then we heated the um, iron 2 oxalate slash potassium oxalate mixture to 40 degrees on a hot Then we obtained 17 milliliters of 6% hydrogen peroxide and 15 milliliters of 10% ox of oxalic acid. And we transferred 8 milliliters of this to a 10, mil 10 milliliter graduated cylinder. Then we heated our um, iron oxalate and potassium oxalate mixture to around 40 degrees, uh, slowly and carefully while stirring, and added 17 milliliters of hydrogen peroxide. Then we continuously stirred the solution until we had added all of our hydrogen peroxide, or brick red solids. Once all of the hydrogen peroxide had been added to the solution, we continued to stir the solution as it heated. Once it was boiling, we quickly added 8 milliliters of oxalic acid and then the remaining milliliter, 7 milliliters of oxalic acid um, drop wise to the solution. The mixture changed from uh, brick red into an olive color and then finally bright green. And then we turned the hot plate off and placed the beaker on a ceramic fiber square to cool. We stirred the contents as they were cooling to prevent bumping. Um, once the beaker cooled, we filtered the remaining solids in it by gravity a few times so that the solution was clear. Then we got about 20 milliliters of 95% ethyl alcohol in a clean uh, 50 milliliter graduating cylinder and added that to our potassium potassium complex. This produced a green precipitate, uh, potassium ferrous oxalic acid. Potassium something. This produced a bright green, this produced hydrated potassium ferrous oxalate. Then we covered the beaker with wash glass and stored it um, until we could filtrate it. Then we set up a buchner funnel and we filtered we filtered our um, solution and got the precipitate out. Then um, we rinsed out the beaker with um, ethyl alcohol and acetone to make sure we got all of the precipitate out of our beaker. And we allowed it to dry under air suction for five minutes and disconnected the hose and aspirator. Finally, we removed the filter paper and the precipitate and um, weighed our final product. Then we recorded that mass in our data table. And then today, we weighed out approximately 0 0.05 grams of the precipitate on a balance and transferred that to a 250 milliliter beaker with 100 milliliters of distilled water. In. Then we stirred to dissolve it and put it into a cuvette.
And then we used our spectrophotometer and an, a cuvette filled with uh, distilled water to set it to zero. And um, once we did that, we put the cuvette with our solution in it and recorded the absorbance. Then we repeated this um, twice more, changing the wavelengths from 360 to 370 and then to 380. Um, and then we recorded our answers. Is that the water?